Yes, sir. Big Stewie checking in, man. Trapping at the trap house, man. I'm feeling good. I got Mr. Bennett in the building. Yes, sir. The big bees. Yo. Chance, what's up, man? Hey, I'm, I'm chilling. I'm in Atlanta. I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm excited. It's the first time I got a chance to interview you. You know what I mean? I've been trying to catch up with you for a long time, just coming from Chicago. What is it like growing up in Chicago at your age back then? Because I know it's, it's kind of crazy now. I'm from the Midwest, too, so. Yeah. I mean, it was always a little crazy. I feel like, uh, you know, when I was growing up, it was... I think the it wasn't as many, you know, crazy like shootings and like super wild stuff happening like in the in the in the capacity that's happening now. Right. But it was uh but I think even now like the city is like the culture goes beyond like just, you know, the tragedy that you hear about. There's right. a lot of like love and joy and like beauty in the city and I feel like that hasn't really wavered since I was a kid. Like it's like a lot of like the same restaurants, the same like events like you can still go to the taste of chicago you can still like it's like i don't know it's a, it, when i was growing up the city was very musical that's one thing i could say for sure okay it's like footwork in and juke music was really Come big on, when, R. I was Kelly, high school, <clears throat> when i was coming out of high school the the bopping like uh the west side stuff was going real crazy and uh yeah, it's always been like a, a big music hub for sure. So seeing that now, you know, because I feel like you one of the artists that have a different positive light on, on how you outlook and how you see things and view things. What do you feel like the climate is of, of the young black man right now that we going through right now? I think we're on the brink of a of a thought revolution. Mm, come on with it. I think more and more of us are waking up and understanding who we are in this world as black folks, how how important it is to protect uh, our families our sisters, our wives, our mothers. Um, it's a slow but but sure revolution of thought, I think. And I think like we are the leaders at the forefront of mm -hmm. of uh of making this 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 liberation move. We definitely gotta listen to our sisters because and if you go through history all these movements start with, with black women. Mm -hmm. Um but I think I think yeah, I think we're on the on the on the precipice of a new a new day where we protect our women, where we uh, commit to, you know, our word or whatever we promise will be, and and we reclaim our children. Mm, okay. Okay, I like that answer. So, so tell me how important this is, because I, I feel like we have gotten away from um, just how important having a strong support system as far as a woman. I feel like so much music that we listen to, and you got you got different artists. I ain't going to drop no names, but we know the artists that, yeah. that the girls talk about this, but I feel like they talk about this because guys talk about this. But how important is it for you to have that strong woman behind you, that, that backbone? How much push did they give you to just like keep going those days that you feel like you want to quit? And usually that woman to be like, hey. Get your ass up, man. <laughs> it's it's been everything to me, you know. I uh, I come from a long line of strong women. My grandmothers, my mother, you know, uh, my my manager at one point, Colleen Mayer, is a strong woman in my life. Taryn, uh, my management now, is a strong woman. Like it's uh, you know, obviously my wife is the. You know, to look like the word wife. Back. I'm looking for one. Yeah, it's a it's it's a, it's a but I think like. It's also not necessarily anybody's duty to like to help you be a man. Right. Like that's just like that is your role and responsibility. But yeah, without like I don't know I don't know how dudes can function without having a, a woman's voice or reason. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Or or like, you know, having somebody that that they support and protect. You know what I'm saying? Where, where did we go wrong? Like what what at what point? I, I've tried to always rewind it like when did we just stop giving a damn and just feeling like it, you're more of a man if you have multiple women versus giving your love? And you can't even give somebody 100% if you have multiple things got going yeah. on. You know what I mean? It's only so much you can give. Yeah, I mean, I think the uh, the government has a large deal to do okay. with breaking up the black family. Come but on now. also, like, I think, you know, it's culture also. Like, everything that you see and hear is propaganda pushing you in one direction or the other. Like, even myself, like I have like you know uh, understandings of what I think, how I think the world should function, how I think a family should function, how I think you know the relationship between men and women or children and their parents or uh, us as a people and uh, and our governing body. Like I have ideas of how I think relationships are supposed to work, and I'm always you know put them out there as a person with a platform, but right. like also like everything else might have you know be showing you something different on TV so I think we we raised by our environments right. for sure as well as our parents but like 
what we see in movies, what we see in music, what we see being celebrated or platformed is usually what we, you know, try and mimic our lives after. Right. So being here, being being who you are, being so positive and living with love, like, where does that come from? Like, like what's, why is that so important to you? Um, stability is just important. You know? Come on. Like, you just want to have some stability. You want to have some sort of, like, uh, you know, routine to your life or <clears throat> things that you could, you know, always count on being there. And, you know, my parents been married for 30 years. Come on now, mine you too. You know what I'm saying? So, like, seeing a black family from 79th, from Chicago, from, you know, where where we all come from, like, live their whole lives with two kids and, and, and still married, like, I think that's a big, big influence on my life or how I see the world working. Um, and, and I feel like, I don't know. Maybe that's just my temperament. Maybe right. I just like stuff to go a certain way. I don't know. Right. Just probably just growing up, just being around. Yeah. So integrity, man. Like integrity is super integrity important. is everything. So I, I know that word means a lot to you. The world that we living in right now, with all the bullshit that's going on, all the killings, them trying to slay our our black men. You know what I mean? The police, it's just everything we're going through. Why do you care so much when a lot of people don't give a fuck about what you care about? What 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 drives you to keep going to 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 just keep walking through that fire flame, man? I think it's responsibility. I think it's like for one, I had a kid young, so I had my first daughter when I was twenty one and I think ever since then I've always thought about like what can I do, how can I impress upon the world to make it more of the world that she deserves to mm-hmm. live in, right? And and I think about that also for other people's kids and for and for just our our future at large as humans and as a people. And I think uh I think we were handed this environment that we live in. It was designed for us. We didn't make it to be like this, especially black people in the United States. Right. And I think we need, you know, more community and more of a, a connection so that we can decide how we want our community to function and decide how we want our lives to be because that's what that's what any you know diasporan population does right, right. like if you Irish American Italian American Jewish American if you're from another place and you basically a transplant or first or second generation you you go into your community of people that are like you and you build a a sort of like way of life, mm-hmm. right? And and in that community, there's connections that are strong enough to be able to like be fluid and come up with new ways that you want to interact and and how to demand more from the governing body that you live under. And black folks in America, we've been by design so like disconnected from the idea of us being a, a an extension of a country or a continent that we don't really like you know make that connection of being like oh yeah like we can demand sh- stuff as right. a people we can we can come together and say this is how we want you know our interactions with the state to go or how we want our interactions with each other to go but we're just disjointed right now and and I think like in the in the next like 2 to 3 years we're going to be a whole different problem like mm. uh, in a good way so yeah. you do believe in like one voice I get a lot of kids to be like even when we go talk about going vote man what my vote going to do a lot. I feel what like my thought gonna do a lot. You just gotta do it. You just gotta figure out how to do it because you never know the movement that's gonna come along with that. Like seeing a million man march. Exactly. Never would have seen that. Like you got a, a million black men in DC. A, a demonstration. Come on now. No, that's what we need. We need connection. We need big spaces. We need demonstrations, and we need we need conversation. We need to be able to like talk about real shit when we get around each other, and and be able to do it in private, and be able to do it like you know amongst ourselves. And and with that, it's like the elevation is inevitable. Mm. We talk about black people and mental health. How do you maintain your mental health? Because I right now, like the suicide of the black man is going so high because it's like I tell them all the time and tell my sisters, and my homegirls, they're like, well, what's what's going on with the relationship with this? Because it's hard being black. You got to worry about the black man killing you. You got to worry about the police killing you. You got to go to work and worry about your boss treating you like shit and go home to a woman that might be like, nigga, you ain't done shit. <laughs> motherfucker this, motherfucker that. How important is it for just that positive thought that just come through? I think that I think we, we've always been been built to be so strong. When it's like, I met a woman that I deal with right now that I've never even told her. I had a woman tell me, you're so handsome. You're so smart. I'm proud of you. 
that means so much. Like, yeah. how do you keep your mental health I- I- intact with everything going on and all the pressure that you have being an artist? I don't know that this is necessarily healthy, but I feel like being feeling purposed is mm. like a big part of like staying alive. You Come know on what up. I'm saying? Feeling like you have something that you are working towards or that you're working on or that or someone that you're responsible for or something you're responsible for is what, you know, keeps me going. So when I know I have something to work on or I know I got to do something for my kids or I know I got to do something for my family, that's when I feel like I exist mm. and and that and that my existence is important. And I think like all those things you listed kind of like make you feel like you 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 don't have a purpose or or misguide you on what your purpose is. And so I would say like it's hard to tell somebody to just stay positive or just mm. uh, especially if the things that they have to look forward to they don't think are going to benefit them or 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 negatively affect them. So I feel like having something. Reminding yourself who you are, you know what I'm saying. Okay. Going and finding purpose, and and not let and not letting others define your purpose is, I think, one of the best ways to keep saying. But also, you could get so wrapped up in your work or in your purpose that then you feel defeated in that too. So, I think balance. Yeah, balance. I think balance is important. I think therapy is important, but I hate saying that because I don't go to therapy. <laughs> so I don't want to just be telling people to do stuff that I don't do. But I do know that it has worked wonders for people in my life. Right. Okay, speaking of music, what are these names saying to you? Michael Jackson, Sam Cooke, Billie Holiday. What memories do they bring you? Liberation. Liberation for show. You know, um, uh, Sam Cooke for show, you know, just in in, in, in writing. Um, uh, I was born by the river. Come on now. In a little tent. It's like telling our stories is is a is a way of like, of of liberating us because we we're impressed upon with like propaganda and misinformation and miseducation so much that like just having somebody tell tell the story of where we are or where we're coming from or where we're trying to head is is radical and goes against the the system and how it wants us to to live so i feel like when i think about sam cook um when I think about uh, who, who who else did you say? Billy Holiday. Billy Holiday. When I think about St- Strange Fruit, mm. you know, like a song that's about lynchings, it was like one of the first ways that a lot of people learned about what was happening in the South. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like our voices as artists, what we do is we communicate at the highest level. I always say, what makes us human, what gives you humanity, is the fact that you could communicate. Facts. Like at a high level, though. Like animals obviously communicate, but the m- amount of emotions. And situations that we can describe to each other and, and, and show and display. Yeah, like we have a million different ways of communicating, and we communicate at a high level. But what makes you an artist is that you communicate at the highest level. Come on so up. you can put it together in ways that people that aren't even in the same room as you can can touch and feel and connect on other sides of the world. And so when you know when Billie Holiday made Strange Fruit, she gave a mental picture. Uh, the anguish in her voice, the 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 you know the pure might of the arrangement, like it, it paints a crazy picture in mm. your head, especially if you're some white person that might be removed from what was going on in, in the in the 20s. Like I, I think, also MJ, like he fought for liberation too. Like I, when I think of all those people, I think of like radical artists because they were you know speaking on something that everybody wasn't necessarily talking about. Okay. Emotional roller coaster. High <laughs> so high you can put bow ball on, <laughs> on a poster. poster. Stop playing. Like emotional roller coaster, explain that to me. You know what I mean? Like yeah. like where were you feeling at, at that moment? You know what I'm saying? Be, considering like a roller coaster goes up and down and steps. Yeah. Everybody think that it's a straight ride when you get to the top or you get some money. No. Nah. More money, more problems. <laughs> yeah. Did he sit it now? The ups and downs. Yeah, I mean when I made the highs and the lows, like the whole goal was to like kind of like, you know, attack my life from an analytical perspective and like kind of like talk about how my feelings change but also about how other people's feelings change as I go through these things so like I think using the term emotional roller coaster what's funny is like I've been doing a lot of film stuff Mm. and 
when people say emotional roller coaster, they're usually describing a film. Rex. What was it like? Oh, it was an emotional roller coaster. It was ups and downs. It was going all all over the place. I wanted to cry. I wanted to laugh. That's my life. You know what I'm saying? It is like a movie, and I do go through all those as fast as the plot twist in a movie. Um, but in that next line, I say, uh, I said, uh, I'm an emotional roller coaster. We're high so high, I could put bowl bowl on a poster. But when the bread gets low, mm. like four loaves and a toaster, toaster. Okay. oh, the shoulders can't get cold. It's oh, ten man. toes in Nova Scotia. Come on, man. So I'm, I'm, Stop uh, playing, man. Stop playing. <laughs> Stop playing. But it's crucial to me because it's like I could just talk about how these ups and downs affect me, but that second bar isn't really even about me. That second bar is about how other people react right. to when my bread gets low. Mm. Though they, I get the cold shoulder once my when I, people start acting different once I'm going through something. And so it's like I can write from my perspective and I can write about how I go through things, but I can also still be a mirror to other people and how uh, how they act in our relationship. So like I felt like this was one of my most powerful verses because it was very, very open, but also very, very well written. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? It's, it is barred out. So even if you, you know, if you on the first listen, if you can't get all the words, at least you get the flow and you feel the disjointedness of it and, and the, you know, the, how visceral it is and how much, you know, fervor I have saying it. And then if you, once you get past the flow and you start to get to the wordplay, it's like, oh, this is like some pure artistry. Mm. Like this is how the words that he chose or the way that what he chose to rhyme with or how he, and then it's like, once you get even further later, you can actually understand what I'm, what I'm saying, which I think will just come over time. More views of the video, more listens to the song. Like over time, it just unfolds layer after layer, and, and that's that's the reason why I had to do a video that was so dope. That's why I had to do the text on the screen. And it's that like, was the last thing I was going to ask you after we ended this interview. Like, how do you see music? Because you see it from a different bird's eye view. I see it from words. Like I'm I'm a wordsmith. Like that's my like you know there's blacksmiths and metalsmiths and locksmiths. Like I work on words all day, mm. and and I find the best way to try and convey what I'm trying to do. Because like I said, I'm an artist. I communicate on the highest level. So you know, I I experience music obviously like anybody else. Rhythm first, you know, tone first, like feeling first. But the next the next thing I'm doing maybe even on that first listen is trying to analyze what the lyrics are what perspective you're writing from you know what what words you're using more than once like I'm I'm trying to really analyze it on some on, on an artistry level and so when I'm when I'm making music and listening to music and you know recording music creating music performing music I'm so lyric first that it's like that's why my performances look the way they do because I'm really man. saying that shit come on now man Chance Rapper ladies and gentlemen if you don't know him you know him by now you know what I mean I definitely appreciate you King we appreciate love you, you. we appreciate you everything what you stand for Yo, keep you, pushing our people forward man thank you man love man. King for sure as always love